What's up Universe? Welcome to the Serie A review of round 35, if you would like. This one will be Milan heavy, for sure. Um, Milan's game was maybe not the most important game, but it was the most goal scoring game. But there was a kind of malaise hanging over the club for a while. That on one side I can understand, on the other side uh, it's a little bit weird given where just five years ago Milan have been. So I want to actually talk that off my chest as well. Uh, we had a pretty big match between uh, Juve and Roma. Roma trending now, you know, De Rossi has the contract. I feel Sosha vibes, De Rossi has the contract. It's a little bit going down. I don't think Roma will make the Champions League unless Atalanta win the Europa League. But it's not quite decided yet, but at the moment they're on the outside looking in and not looking all that great. We have, of course, quite a few big results in the battle against relegation, which is the one point in the league that is really, really exciting. Sassuolo grabbing a last-ditch effort maybe to get survival by beating the champions twice. The only team that can beat Inter is Sassuolo. Those are big six points. However, um, it may still not be in enough, although all the opponents around them, you know, they got points maybe but not really moving away as well. So, you know, this is still wide, wide open. The only one that got a huge one is Verona staying in there. And to me, uh, these are basically the big talking points that um, draw in Rome. Verona making a huge push uh, in moving on to survival. Atalanta still being really, really, really good. I mean, they're finding a form late, which might carry them at least to one title. I think it would be the no, they won a cup, cup Italia, but other than that, it would be the only second ever title that they win, which would be amazing, it would be big validation for the Gasparini era, and then of course, Milan. And let's let me start about on Milan. I will talk about the match a little bit later, but you know, um, there has been quite some bad rumors, and Milan have been actually a victim of their own success. The title two years ago, which was one of the best titles that I've ever had in my Milan uh, fandom. I think the only one that I would take over that is the one that they won in 99, because that came similar, but it had the additional effect of being in the centenary year and, you know, also in the last place. And there was a little bit of excitement more than, you know, the Sassuolo win was easy, but it was a completely unexpected title. Both of these, and those are my two favorite titles. The thing is that after the title celebration, everything kind of fell apart. And that's the one thing that is so annoying. It's similar, actually. I mean, if I was a Napoli fan, I could sit here and I'll say, I mean, you had this wonderful title. Everything was falling apart afterwards. For me, it kind of went a little bit in stages, but you know, um, no, uh, losing Cassia, losing important players, not gaining momentum. Then there was the ownership change. Uh, the transfer summer didn't go well. And then a year later, yes, you reach a Champions League semi-final, but, and this is the big but, you have been beaten by Inter in that semi-final. And you have been losing now six derbies in a row to Inter, who are now the champions. You actually thought, and at the beginning of the season, it looked like it will be a straight race for this second star. And then you lose the derby again. I mean, you lost five derbies to Inter in 23 and you lose a sixth one to hand into the title in 24. And so a season that you have more points than you had last season, so you had it's overall an, an improvement. I mean, Milan is comfortably the second best team in Italy seen over the entire season. Although maybe at the moment Atalanta have better form. But by not competing against Inter and losing all these derbies and being humiliated, really being humiliated in most of the derbies, because you have barely still so a chance, this turns the atmosphere against the club lead leadership. The only thing that the club lead leadership under Jerry Cardinale, Redbird, so far have kind of always pushed is the stadium, but even there I'm not quite certain what's happening. Seemingly they're getting a new stadium. The, you know, the mayor of Milan wants to revamp San Siro. I hear similar talks with Inter, which is okay, but I don't know how Inter can finance a new stadium. Uh, Milan at least have their finances in order, but then there's the other thing. Milan are financially probably one of the strongest positions in Serie A. And then you have the neighbors that are so much in debt 
And they're for four years the best team in, in the league. Yes, Paratici do, doing a, a brilliant job. I mean, I, I've said it be, uh, repeatedly here, begrudgingly, but Inter have been losing their best players and they got better every time. Whereas Milan, yes, we had a splurge in the summer that addressed some of the issues, but it opened up others as well. And it is always so public what Milan wants. Yeah, and then I think Pioli has doing, been doing overall good work. Uh, I've shown you a few uh, weeks ago that under Pioli, it has been a steady increase, at least in rating. And I think there's an idea there. However, he lacks a little bit the backing. I think the transfer summer did not go with Milan. Definitely would need a really solid midfield. They won the Scudetto because they had an absolutely amazing midfield with Benazir, Cassie and Tonali. Two of these are already gone and Benazir was injured. So you had to revamp that and then the left side is so dominant over the right side. And then not having, you know, I love Giroud. He's gone now as well, but and he did all his work, but you know, a little bit more flexibility up front. Squad building was always a little bit an issue as well. Now it seems that Pioli is out. I yes, I see that there are obvious flaws with Pioli. But I don't see anything better obvious on the horizon. Yes, if you could get a Thomas Tuchel, great. If you get a Jürgen Klopp, great. Will they work for it for Italy? I don't know. I don't want to see anything of Conte. Conte is one that goes in, maybe gets your champ treasure, but then uh, completely turns the club upside down. And so then you have, you know, the candidates out there. Lopetegui, I think he's a good manager, but he has the whole uh, entourage around him that I'm really not uh, happy about. So he was quickly kiboshed by the fan base. Which I think really then made the Kurva suits stand up. And they may launch the protest because they said, well, we don't know what this management is. We don't know what this project is about. There are only empty words. There's no com com communication, nothing happening there. And this was a really, really bad sign. There was no support. And what is it with my favorite teams? Lusk fans denying support this, this uh, year. And I'm not saying that I don't understand it, but it's kind of weird for me. And now Mil Mina fans also not doing anything at it. On top of that, they left multiple banners out there and walked out in the 80th minute and left it in eerie silence. I'm familiar with that on being a Lusk fan, uh, because we had happened that as well, that the fans did not, uh, they did not walk out, but they refused to chant totally. And this was the same eerie atmosphere and it was befitting that Milan had a 3-2 lead at that point and then they all walk out and it's a 3-3. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think also the new coaching names are not very inspiring. Let's say it frankly. I mean, Sergio Concesao, yeah, I think he has done good work at Porto, but I don't quite feel it. that This is not a manager that, you know, on the other side, Milan going back to Saki and, and so on, you sometimes give unheralded coaches or Capello a chance and they blossom into something bigger. Angelotti sim, uh, as well, but Angelotti at least has been a coach for, for a while. So maybe there. What I think this management needs to get together is how do we want to play? And there's only one way for Milan to play. Let, let me be frank about it. Milan's tradition is proactive pressing football. This is what Saki did. This is what made Milan great. No defensive crap. But Italian, the, the Italian game is moving in, anyway in that direction. So have that idea. Then find the right coaching high. And if you don't find one, I think keeping Pioli around. I know the cycle is maybe coming to an end but I think before I go into a second string appointment I'd rather get him I think for me it should also be a revelation of how do you recruit I know Italians are probably overvalued but a little bit more of an Italian identity would Milan do also quite some good and maybe an Italian coach it should be I know it's very insular in Italy but I feel like a coach like an Italiano. I know his stock is not high at the moment. But Fiorentina are playing spectacularly. I think of all the coaching candidates that have been rumored. I'm not sure about Concesao, though this is really now the hottest hot topic. I personally would go for Fonseca, because what he has been doing at Roma, I loved watching Roma. 
And I think with Milan and proper backing in the transfer market, this can work. I understand the club wants to be profitable. I understand that probably some big name players will be sold to make money. That's fine. However, money cannot be the first and only objective and the only objective is to go into Champions League. And this is what the fans were protesting. When you have the neighbors winning titles and rubbing it into in, in, in their faces uh, while being completely broke. So that's where the protest come from. And this is where the frustrations come from. I think if it wasn't Inter up on top, but any other team, I think everyone would say Milan had a decent season. But you only met your minimum target with the Champions League. You never competed for the title. You were eliminated in the Champions League. Yes, this was unlucky. I think Milan should have finished second in this group. I really do. Uh, if you just win the first game against New Newcastle, you you are surely second. So, uh, one of the games against Dortmund, the game at the Westfalen Stadion, you could have won. So, uh, the points were, were, were there. Uh, and then you go into Europa League, you announce we want to go for this Europa League. And the way you got eliminated by Roma was really embarrassing. And that's why a overall in the league good season, and I didn't even mention the loss to Atalanta in the Coppa, which was another one of those where you just shake your head because this Coppa was wide open. You shake your head and say, this season could have been so much more. Yes, second place, but it should have been more. There probably should have been a trophy coming your way to really put a stamp on it or at least make deeper runs. So yeah, I'm also not very excited about this Milan season. So much so that, you know, even some of the jerseys that have been released, yeah, I have now uh, bought one, but even they don't feel so hot to me. Ah, weird stuff, weird stuff. Let's walk you through the results of Serie A this weekend. I want to do this re relatively quickly on Friday evening, uh, Torino. Commemorating the Superga disaster, if you don't know, Grande Torino, read it up. One of the best, if not the best, Italian team ever. They perished in a airplane crash. There's a yearly memorial, and this time they also released a special shirt. That's the other thing. I did a Serie A review not too long ago, and the two new shirts were released this week or worn for the first time this week. So it, that's already a goner. So I have to think how I will do uh, jersey reviews from now on. But let's see about that. Any case, the jerseys look proper and really, really nice. The game was not. It was a nil-nil game. That's all the guys. Bologna still fighting for the Champions League spot. Uh, that they, they probably will get. I mean, they have a four-point cushion over Roma, and I think this might just be enough. But they might get a neat, neat, a few more wins in. Uh, we had a very exciting two-to draw between Monza and Lazio. Both Lazio goals coming after defensive errors. Immobile and Vecino always taking taking the lead. But it was Juric, this game, who gets the two equal at the last one again in stoppage time, as Monza have been doing so far. Um, next one up was Sassuolo's one 0 win over Inter. Uh, Loriente scoring early on. Inter were the more proactive team in the first half, at least had a goal from. Uh, I thought the Martinez was an offside, so it ends in a 1 0 for Sassuolo, which might give them a smidgen of a chance for, for survival. However, it's still, you know, they uh, safety is three points away. It's a steep hill to climb with only three games left to play, so we gotta see. For Inter, yeah, they lost twice to Sassuolo. Their only two losses this season are Sassuolo, and it might be uh, another asterisk next, next to it. No, not only did Inter suffer a very embarrassing exit in the Champions League, because they beat Atleti. For me, they're the favorites to go to the final again. And then uh, you become champions by losing twice to a team that's probably gonna relegate it, and you get relegated by beating the champions twice. It's just weird. It's just weird. Uh, Cagliari against Lecce uh, was actually at first all Cagliari. And Cagliari also had the New Jersey weird one, honestly. Um, uh, an early goal at the flag, flag shot from uh, De, Lo De Yola uh, was then called off a handball. Yerimina a little bit later gives them lead, but ever then Gaetano gets sent off for a red card after VAR re review. So uh, Lecce is playing with 10 men. They get a very late equalizer through Krizovic and then twice hit the woodwork. So Lecce is in relative safety. I would say with seven points and three games to go, Lecce will survive Cagliari. They would have needed that, that win because it's only it's only a three-point cushion 
to Udinese, who sit currently in 18th. So uh, that win would have meant a whole lot more for Cagliari. I still think that Cagliari will survive, but it's not straightforward. Let's put it that way. Uh, a win could have eased that tension. Uh, we had a direct relegation head-to-head -head between Empoli and Frosinone. It ends in nil draw. Yes, there was an early Giazzi goal, but in the end, it was, he was in offside position uh, when the shot was parried. Uh, that unfortunately did not work out for them. Uh, the game then was really, really a bad one. Nil-nil. It doesn't help either one of these. Both are still outside of the relegation zone. Have a two-point cushion. A win for either of them would have meant a whole lot more because you would then be in relative safety. But so you're still dangling there and you never know if another team could uh, move forward. The biggest win probably on the weekend, and we have them up here, is uh, Verona. Uh, the first goal came, I mean, what the Fiorentina defense and Fiorentina definitely looking more towards Europe because they have the semi-final uh, return leg in uh, Bruges come, come coming up. Um, absolute mess they make the defender and goalie and the same same line the ball is kind of dropped then he takes down uh, Noslin Lazovic converts the penalty um, yes Fiorentina hit I think the post once and then Castrovilli gets the equalizer however it's Noslin in the 59th minute who gives Verona the go-ahead goal and the winning goal and I think it's also under underreported Verona is doing one of the most amazing jobs this season in the winter break, they were they had to sell everything to make up for financial losses and, and, and so on. So they really sold off the squad and they still will survive, most likely. I mean, my model gives them only a 1% chance of going, going down. Uh, an absolutely amazing, amazing story here uh, that is, again, underreported because who cares about Verona? Weird stadium though that Bente Goldi also I have, I have to say whenever every watch it is one of the um, the way that the stand stands is one of the more interesting ones because seemingly all the boxes are on the bottom. Weird, 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 weird. Um, Milan 3-3. Okay, I, I, I talk a little bit. I mean, uh, you give away an early penalty through Tomori. Pulisic hits the post. Uh, Milan were pre pressing to get an equal as when Chukwesa cross is uh, headed in by Florenzi. Tiny, 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 tiny guy. But the right after that, Ekuban strikes again. And then the game kind of, uh, you know, goes away, honestly. Until uh, Florenzi cross is headed in by Gabia in the 72nd minute. And then a little bit later, Pulisic cross and Giroud. Brilliant shot, 3-2. And I thought, really, well, at least you showed some courage and you moved on and you win this game. And there was still everyone in, in a stance. However, then, very, very long, uh, a cross comes in. That is then uh, by Chao put over the line uh, on goal Retegi was there but that was not necessary <laughs> let's put it that way it's a little bit a picture of the entire season where you just let things slide away although you had some good sprints in between uh, Roma Juve I think was over a really entertaining game I mean, I did not watch it actively but, but, but what I saw it was really a kind of back back and forth for Roma Towards the end, especially, had a little bit more of it. Lukaku gave Roma the lead. Uh, Bremer with a, a really strong header after Chiesa cross e e equalized both teams. Actually going for it, in a way. And Roma definitely needed uh, that, that one. And Tam Abram very late on misses another big chance. It's kind of, you know, already at like, against Leverkusen. The draw, however, opened door for Roma to be overtaken by Atalanta, who still have a game against Fiorentina in hand. That's not looking good uh, for, for them, it has, has, has to be said. Um, speaking of Atlanta, yes, they were down 1-0 at Salendan. However, they turned it around, had already plenty of chances in the first first, especially uh, Lukman missing some crazy chances there. Skamaka gets an equalizer and Cope Maynard's a uh, brilliant shot from far, 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 far out when the ball kind of bounced around. Makes it 2-1, could have been probably 3 or so. Atalanta looking good. Let's see if they can bring it home and get into the final of the Europa League, or where they will be outside us. That also has to be said. And then yesterday, uh, Napoli go back to Udine, where they clinched the title just a year, year ago. This time, yes, it's again Ozyman scoring. Gives them a one lead, but in stoppage time success, gets Udine a potentially vital point. I mean, it's not great. You're two points behind Frosinone and Empoli. But it actually might mean that you potentially could survive. So, big one for them. It's also Napoli now move ahead of Fiorentina, but and there is a chance that there are nine teams of Italy 
in Europe, but for now it is eight. So I mean, between eight and nine, there's Fiorentina and Napoli. This is gonna be a dog fight to 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 the else, which could be resolved by Fiorentina winning the Conference League, which doesn't look that unlikely at the moment. So yeah, there you go. These were my thoughts on Serie A from this weekend. Again, was Milan heavy, but I had to just went a little bit and look uh, it i actually share a little bit of thoughts for the cool crew suit i don't know where this milan project is at the moment going when it looked actually so good previously but yeah italy milan my clubs it's mostly my clubs in any case give me a thumbs up enjoyed this video share your thoughts in the comments below talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!